Thank you for listening. Mark gets my goat. Welcome to Dupo Remo. Dupo Remo. Jeez, I, I I don't know. How about money? You have a lot of money problems because people don't donate to the show. <laughs> the guy has a, a briefcase with $50 million in it. So not only will your family be set for life, but you can make charitable donations. You can improve the town. You can improve the lives of the people around you. You can set up a foundation to help underprivileged people. You can pay off that parking ticket you got. You can get a lot of blow and hookers. I would imagine, yeah. <laughs> Is $50 million just too much? <laughs> no, But that, that, that's just a huge number where you're like, okay, I, I would never run out of money. And then he pulls out a ball peen hammer and says, drop your pants. No. (laughs) You have to hammer a six inch spike through a railroad tie with your penis. What? That's not possible, (laughs) sir. I guess you're not going to get the uh, money, but you have to try. (laughs) He pulls out a farming sickle and he's going to cut off your nipples. Wow. You better be a good shot with that. <laughs> I don't know. I like the idea, the the back and forth of, okay, a guy who does this. You do one if you don't mind. <laughs> I need to come up with a horrible punishment so that you would get the $50 million No, for. no, you just come up with something. Or, all right, okay, so I have to come up with that. The, the nipples thing is not bad enough. Oh, that's pretty bad. Okay, so you would never have nipples for the rest of your life. You would not dare show your self shirtless in public as you are so wont to do. <laughs> you probably have to get skin grafts off your ace. <laughs> You're like a freaking He-Man or Ken doll. Wait, did they have nipples? I'm sure they had something. Otherwise they look freakish. They didn't look freakish. I'll give you that. Okay. I, I, I couldn't come up with something better than the nipples. So <laughs> something worse than having your nipples scythed off. That's what it is though. I mean, it's not, not anything better or worse. That just happens to be what he wants because he, <laughs> he collects them. It's like the tooth fairy, except for with nipples. He's the nipple gnome. He, he pays more than the tooth fairy does, but he takes nipples, not teeth. He just wants your baby nipples. Don't worry. Your, your uh, wisdom nipples will grow in. <laughs> your adult nipples will grow in later. Yeah, if it was something that grew back. There's not a lot of things that grew back. He's $50 million and he's going to cut your hair (laughs) off your ass. Unfortunately, we're not like lizards, so the tail doesn't grow back. No, I wouldn't even imagine lizards have nipples. I have to ask Abby Hilton. Yeah, she used to stuff taxidermy style a roadkill, so she might know that kind of thing. Did she really? She admitted to that on uh, one of her podcasts. Well, I admitted that I would sacrifice the life of the person I held most dear just to be pretty. So yeah. that doesn't make Abby sound like a monster that she it used doesn't. to. It doesn't. just makes her seem kind of a little weird. But yeah. She wouldn't have her way with this roadkill. Come on. It's not me who we're talking about. Right. She's not a monster. Just... Just quirky. She just knows whether uh, lizards have nipples or not. I bet they don't because I don't think that they lactate. I think that's a mammalian thing. If if that were the case, then they would call them mammary glands rather than... Rather than boobies. It, uh, obviously, as you've already suggested that you would l- sacrifice the person you love the most to become pretty, we need to uh, move into the actual person you love the most, which must be yourself. Oh, because I love myself or a perfect version of myself more than I love this other person. Right. So we need to That's find a, some way to damage you. Um, I think this podcast has probably done it. <laughs> you you become pretty except there's got to be some small, like you have a, a, a little tail. <laughs> Would you still do it? You become totally beautiful except you have a tail. A very small one, like the one on Shallow Hell that uh, that Jason Alexander, yeah, Jason Alexander's character has. So then, would that prettiness avail you anything, or would people still be repelled by the tail, and so it would get you nowhere? Well, uh, very few people would actually see me with my pants off. I would, well, not in this George Clooney scenario. Would yeah, they? that's what I'm saying. The, I don't know the, the the tail thing. You can't cut it off. Although that would probably be painful, wouldn't it? Yeah. And we've established I like myself too much to want pain. <laughs> um, yeah, I'd, I'd go for the tail thing because, you know, it's just 
Uh, surely there would be a downside. And I'm like, oh, shoot, the tail. And the, the last scene in Shallow Hell, I think his tail is wagging. Right. Somebody might notice that or whatever. But uh, how about this? You would be as good looking as George Clooney or Tom Cruise or Mickey Rooney, whoever you're. Uh, the great. Right. Whoever your perfect uh, version of yourself is. But the one thing you could never do is get another erection in your life. Mm, see, now that's that's good. Not even with Viagra, it would still not work. It's like a, a gift of the Magi. You you cut your hair to buy the watch, but the watch was sold to buy the comb for the hair. Uh, yeah, it was a chain for the watch, wasn't it? Right. That's good, man. That's a good uh, scenario. But yes. the truth is, beauty serves more than just getting girls into bed. Right. It really does. Just the amount of doors it opens are not limited just to bedroom doors. <laughs> and so your life would be infinitely better in most respects. Mm -hmm. Or sorry, I, mean, I guess we should say my life would be than it is right now. But I think the chief reason you would want to be attractive is to attract mates, you know, yeah. to get other. Yeah. Was that too anthropological? Or should Should I not have said mates? You should have said primates, because that's oh, really what you would be wanting to attract. <laughs> now, yeah, it does depend on what your purpose is with that beauty, because, yeah, there are many uses for beauty. And uh, that's what I was going to say uh, before you took the words right out of my mouth. Um, yeah, it, it, there is a lot of advantages to being beautiful. You could go to Hollywood and be that actor that you wanted to be when you were growing up and you... And, spent time there doing that kind of thing but as the beautiful guy you could get those roles that you were never able to get now let's say that that was the case with ryan gosling because a lot of people find him super super attractive right now he's very popular and it came out tomorrow in all the papers that he is incapable of getting an erection that he is impotent would he cease to be the sex symbol that he is and, and all the parts that are offered to him, would those go away if suddenly everybody and, and, and you know, he could say, oh, that's horseshit. I can bone with the best of them, but <laughs> it is true. So he can't like disprove it, but he can just be like, I, I won't dignify that. It's the Jamie Lee Curtis was born a man interview question. It's like, I'm not going to dignify that with a response. Mm -hmm. How badly would that harm his career? I don't know. I don't think it would harm it nearly as bad as, for example, you know, a lot of people say Tom Cruise is gay and he denies that, won't dignify it with a response, etc. If he did come out and say, I, in fact, I am. I think there are some people who do that and then they lose a lot of fans from the female side. You know, they're like, oh, he's not somebody that I could think about getting with because he doesn't want to get with women. In the back of everybody's mind... They say, you know, what if he fell in love with me or what if, right. you know, the two of us were on a desert island and all that. And the fantasy is broken when you find out that it's like, no, he's not attracted to any women. Yeah, I think that's one of the main reasons why a lot of actors will remain in the closet for a long time until they get to the point where they're old enough. They're like, yeah, it doesn't matter anymore. Nobody finds me attractive now, so I might as well or something like that because they don't want to alienate fans that might not like them anymore because of that i wonder if to this day and age it might be to the point where maybe they'll gain more fans from the other side by doing that so it's worth it i don't think we're there yet but yeah i don't think we're quite there yet but. and the only way to for sure know is if somebody actually right. does it and at this point i don't think we've had a significantly famous person especially somebody famous for being a ladies man right that guy. kind of thing and they're out there there are lots that are closeted mm -hmm. and, and it's understandable. Honestly, I mean, I, I, maybe the gay community feels betrayed by that or feels like, you know, you're a, what's worse than a sellout. There's got to be a word for what's for the thing beyond. And maybe an Uncle Tom is worse than a sellout kind of thing. Uncle Tom Cruise. <laughs> and I didn't I didn't mean that. Well, I did. But only if it was funny. Did I mean it? Yeah. Just to somebody somewhere at some point has to do it. And say, you know, hey, I'm gay. Daniel Craig comes out and says, I'm gay. Is he suddenly no longer James Bond? And it, I, I remember when Anne Heche came out as a lesbian and she had already shot that Six Days, Seven Nights flick with Harrison Ford. 
And I remember a lot of people saying that that hurt that film's box office. And he was on Letterman. And Dave said, who plays the girl in this movie? And, and Ford says, oh, it's Anne, Anne Heche. And Dave said, wow, you, you really got your work cut out for you on that one. <laughs> and of course, we all laughed. But she's just an actress. She's she's pretending to fall in love with these right. people. It, it shouldn't matter what she does in her private life, who she's attracted to there. Mm -hmm. And yet it's possible that that hurt and Haitian's career. I, I yeah, Some people have that in the back of their head and going back to the original uh, question with it. I don't think that just not being able to get it up, is going to be quite the same because I think women are different than men. I, no, I, I, they are. you take that back. It turns man. out that there's women, somebody in our forums that took exception to that. Women are wired a little differently in, in their mind. And when it comes down to it, it's not a sexist remark or a insult. What I'm trying to say here, you know, it's funny because somebody sent around a picture I saw the other day on Facebook where it has like a big machine. Right. And on the top side is the man side. It says man. And then on the bottom side, it says woman. On the top side, man, it has a uh, toggle one switch. switch. It says on, off. <laughs> on the woman's side, there's like 15 dials, so a whole bunch of switches and all these things. And, and, you know, it's kind of the way men are, you know. For a man, yeah, if that was the deal, it would probably would be a deal breaker kind of a thing. But for women, you know, that's not necessarily the most important thing or maybe even not in the top five <laughs> or something, you know. There's so much more that they care about and look for in a man as opposed to just whether he can get it up or not. That I, I don't know that it would be nearly as big of a deal as the idea that, oh, it doesn't even like women at all. Or though maybe that is the same thing. I don't know. That Gets My Goat will be continued next time. That Gets My Goat is produced under a Creative Commons okay. 3.0 license. As if anyone would want to copy this crap.